Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to take a look at the astrological energies from February 8th until February 15th as we continue through Aquarius season. And over this next week, there are three important energies coming up that are going to amplify and highlight three areas of your life and bring them up to your awareness, to your attention and perhaps even require you to make some decisions or choices. So we're going to be talking about those three areas of your life, which correlate to three astrological events unfolding, and why this is a time to really go for it, to step into what you want, to lean into it, to really be in your power, strength, confidence of what you are creating in your life and owning your own manifestation abilities, owning your choices and what you're trusting and feeling is correct for you. All planets are direct. All energies are open and flowing and moving. And this can almost feel like things are happening too quickly at times. It depends on how you receive and work with energies. It could feel like you'd like things to actually go a little bit slower, but the energies right now are requiring us to trust our own energy, to trust our own desires, intentions, and what matters to you. So there are openings here that the universe perhaps is pushing you towards. And it could feel like a bit of a reluctant push if you're thinking you're not ready. But there's something from the universe saying, it's time, you're ready. Don't overthink it. Don't overplay it in your head. Don't exhaust yourself thinking about all the what ifs and possibilities and what about that or what if this happens. All those things that the mind loves to spin in or sort out. This is a time where the energies want you to go. They want you to move forward. And in last week's show, I mentioned how the universe is not playing right now. The universe is asking you to fully be in command of what you want, what you need, who you are, and to live and breathe from that place on a daily basis, to really be in a sense of, I am worthy of this. This is what I have worked for. This is what I have figured out. This is what I have understood about myself, whatever it might be for you, because the energies right now are about moving us forward into new chapters, into new experiences, into new places in our lives that are happening now. And it's funny because you could have an intention for something, a desire. You could think, okay, I really want to manifest this. And then all of a sudden it shows up and you could have a disbelief or a sense of, oh, wow, that was easier than I thought. So the energies are swift moving. And this is now where it's up to us to continually trust what is happening, even if it feels like it's moving too fast. Now, these energies are moving forward until April. That's when we'll have our next Mercury retrograde. And then in May, we will have Pluto station retrograde. But basically, we have a lot that's ready to evolve and shift and change. How much are you trusting that process in yourself? How much are you trusting the universe in that process as well? Now, I mentioned how we have three areas of your chart that are going to be highlighted over the next week or so, and that's because of conjunctions that are occurring between the personal planets and outer planets. This is always significant in what comes up in the energy and the sense that it feels bigger and that there's something more prominent as well that you're meant to look at, trust, understand, or work with. Now on February 10th, we're going to have Mercury in Capricorn conjunct Pluto in Capricorn at 28 degrees. This conjunction is exact February 10th, but you could feel it building February 8th, February 9th. And this is territory that Mercury has spent an extended time in because of his previous retrograde in Capricorn. Now he meets up with Pluto at 28 degrees, and there's something here that you're ready to face. 
you're ready to evolve, you're ready to own. And I feel this as something empowering about a truth, something that maybe you weren't sure how to express. This could be something that was blocked or held back in your throat chakra or in your mind. This could be something that you just want to be in your power around. Mercury the messenger is all about what we are conceptualizing, thinking, perceiving, the information we take in, and then how we communicate it, how we then write it out, talk it out, what we do with our thoughts. And when Mercury is conjunct Pluto, there's an intensification here of the energies that can stir up fears and doubts, that could stir up something deeper within you, but it feels like this is a purging. It feels like there's meant to be something that's released. It just comes out. It sets you free. It could be something that has been spinning in your head and you finally have the power and strength to say what you need to say. Because Capricorn is also about being in a place of authority with your thoughts, with what you want, what you need, what you desire. So there could be something here that's pushing you to speak up, asking you to be in your power in particular conversations you have this week or exchanges in anything you need to share or state. And with Capricorn, this can be about elders, your boss, a parent, somebody that you report to, And it could also be people reporting to you. If you are the authority, the manager, the boss, the one in charge, this is where you could also have experience of others coming forward, giving you information, sharing with you something important that you're meant to know. There is a seriousness to this energy. There is less of a lightness. It's not frivolous. It's more like, I need to say this. This is important, or this is what I've been thinking, and I need to express it. So it's important to have intentional conversations this week, to take things seriously, to really look at the details, the particulars, understand perhaps where you need to ask clarifying questions or get more information. But there's a seriousness here that could also be a turning point. There could be something that you finally get off your chest, that you're finally able to put words around. So again, if it's been spinning in your head, there could be an instance where you're like, okay, I know exactly what I need to say and I'm sourcing it from a place of empowerment, which is different than sourcing it from a place of fear. So that's something to evaluate in yourself. Am I speaking from a place of being in my power and owning my truth or am I overly concerned perhaps with how this might unfold or somebody else's responses. So look at how you're communicating right now. And if it's interesting, because with Pluto, you could even just blurt it all out. Like it could all just come out and maybe it's not always eloquent, but there's something that again, you just have to energetically release. And keep in mind that if you're on the receiving end of this, this isn't always something that people do well or do graciously. So if you're on the receiving end of somebody's outburst, that could be part of this energy too. So this is happening at 28 degrees of Capricorn in your chart, Mercury conjunct Pluto. Then Mercury moves into Aquarius on February 11th. And Mercury does well in Aquarius because it is an air sign and because Mercury can have more expression that just flows through. In fact, Mercury in Aquarius can have a direct frequency line to universal information and messages. This is where you could feel like you're just receiving insights or information. This could also help with anything you're trying to figure out. How does this come together? How do we make this work? And Aquarius is gifted with seeing all the puzzle pieces and how to bring it into a system that works, how to make the dots connect. So this is where you could also have some outlandish ideas, some new ways of looking at an issue or a problem. Maybe there's things opening up here that are showing you new solutions, new possibilities. So Mercury enters Aquarius 
February 11th. And this is where Mercury can feel more on its game and the energy tends to move a bit faster in the air signs. This is also a social energy where Mercury wants to talk to people, wants to get out there and meet up and see what's going on and get people together. So there is a socializing energy here as well. And there is a sense too that whatever you have been sitting with or working through with Mercury in Capricorn for so long because of the retrograde phase, it's like you get a new understanding. I feel Mercury in Aquarius brings in new light, new perspectives. It alleviates the density. It shows us what we're ready to do differently because Capricorn is about tradition and this is how we do it. This is what works. And then Aquarius is about the rebellion against tradition where you don't want to do it how it's always been done. You don't want to follow the pack. Instead, let's create something different. Let's look at this in a new way. Let's look at the weak points and see how we can change that around or improve it. So there is a very creative energy here with Mercury and Aquarius, and that would be something to work with if especially you felt a density or stagnation with Mercury in Capricorn sense. December 7th. So Mercury enters Aquarius on February 11th and will stay there until March 3rd. Also on February 11th, we're going to see Mars in Gemini sextile Chiron in Aries at 13 degrees. Now both planets are direct after being retrograde and they are in a new point of understanding. And this feels like a really lovely supportive energy. Chiron in Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is in Gemini. They're making a sextile of support. There's something that you've been healing and working through that you're going to have more energy around. It's going to feel like there is momentum or inspiration. It could feel too like you're understanding something that you've been healing, something where you've been gathering independence or the desire to stand on your own, to do something on your own terms. This Chiron in Aries is asking us to trust our independence, trust our own courage, trust our own gut. And with Mars, the ruler of Aries, supporting this, I feel like there is going to be some opportunities or communications that come in that ask you to follow the energy, step into a choice, move towards something that feels like it's supporting your own healing. It's giving you something else to trust and work with. So this can certainly be feeling like there's been a shift in your healing journey. I also feel like this can be supportive of masculine energy because Chiron in Aries is masculine and Mars is masculine. And I feel like there could be something here where if you have felt like a tired wounded warrior, if you have felt that you haven't had the life force or the desire that you would normally have about something, this comes in and gives you that energy, gives you that life force. And you could feel like, okay, I can see how this has shifted because of what has shifted in me, what has changed in my perceptions or my thoughts, where I am actually now in higher alignment with my choices and what I want to go for. And there could be something to, I'm feeling it as like physically, you could feel a physical shift. You could feel like something is physically evolving or healed within you. Both Mars and Chiron are about our physical body. So this supports the energy to go for it. In fact, if you're thinking about your New Year's resolutions or what you wanted to shift in your lifestyle, in your health, in your habits, if you've been wanting to get in better shape or have a more reliable workout routine. This could be the energy that gets you going and gets you moving, especially since in January we had Mars retrograde. So it could have been more sluggish or a little bit more difficult, but this could be a week where you're like, yes, I'm ready. I'm going to go for it. Let's do this. And things just feel like they open up and move more smoothly. 
Then on February 15th, we're going to have Venus conjunct Neptune in Pisces at 24 degrees. So at the start of the show, I mentioned that we had three important energies this week. The first is that Mercury conjunct Pluto in Capricorn at 28 degrees. The second is Venus conjunct Neptune and Pisces at 24 degrees. And this is always a lovely, beautiful conjunction of energy because Venus in Pisces is exalted, which means it's an energy that she loves and adores. And she is also connecting with her higher ruling planet of Neptune. So this could be a time when it feels like there's something in your heart chakra and your crown chakra that are expanding that are lightening up. It could feel like there is something that is being removed from your energy that maybe was a worry, a doubt, a fear. This is where Neptune comes in, brings in a powerful assist to alleviate burdens, to help you surrender something that maybe you felt blocked by, maybe you didn't know what to do with it. So there is a healing component here with a strong focus on this Pisces energy. Also important to note that this is where Jupiter and Neptune had their conjunction last April. They were at 23 degrees, then moved to 24 degrees together. And now we have Venus coming in. And Venus is a personal planet that makes a connection here to that energy of Neptune, which can be so out there, so out of bounds, floating and dreaming and just trusting and just hard to grasp, hard to obtain. But again, I feel like this Venus and Pisces is going to be uplifted in some way. There's something that is going to be supportive for her that allows her to let go of something that maybe you've been holding. Perhaps it's something that you're willingly releasing. You're no longer connected to it. You have fully detached. You've moved on. You're in a whole different energy spectrum. Or if you have the desire to do so, this conjunction with Venus and Neptune and Pisces can assist you in anything that you're willing to release, you're willing to close out and complete. It could also be a time when it's harder to see things clearly, but you can trust what you feel about it. So this is where you can trust if something feels right and you can trust if something feels off. You can really go into your intuitive self, your intuitive messages and understand what is coming in and coming through that's outside of the rational mind, that's outside of logic or reasoning. This is a very feminine energy. It is intuitive, sensitive, empathetic. It's an energy that's very caring and supportive. So make sure you're giving that to yourself. Make sure you're caring for yourself. You're supporting your own intuition and you're validating your own intuition. You know, something about intuitive energies is that we can feel and sense something, but we might not get the actual validation right in the moment or right away. You could have a sense about something, let's say a project at work or someone you're working with and you are just feeling something is off with the energy or it just feels like, I don't know if I can trust this person. I don't feel like they're really being honest with me. And maybe you don't have that exact validation right now, but then in a month or so, it shows up in the physical world. It shows up as validating what you were sensing and picking up. So this will be a time to trust your intuition, trust where your spidey senses are going up, and don't downplay that. Don't dismiss it. Part of our bigger evolutionary cycle right now is honoring these parts of ourselves, honoring our spiritual messages and our intuition, honoring what we're feeling without requiring someone else to necessarily validate it, but also to not diminish it in yourself. So we are learning how to actively trust this, actively work with the process. And it's a bit like, okay, I feel like something's off with this person at work. 
I don't fully trust them. I'll still be professional. I'm going to take care of my responsibilities and do what I need to do. But I'm going to stay aware that this is how I'm feeling. It's similar to basically giving that part of yourself equal room at the table. Allowing that part of yourself to speak up and have a voice and accept it as is. So this energy of Venus conjunct Neptune occurs at 24 degrees of Pisces on February 15th. It occurs actually during Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to all who celebrate. And understand too that this can amplify expectations around Valentine's Day, illusions, idealism, It can really stir up, this would be the perfect demonstration of love, or this would be the most romantic gesture ever. And it's important to note too, that this energy can be ungrounding, where it can feel like it's sweeping you off your feet, or it can feel like something is too good to be true. So simply trusting what is coming up for you and what you're feeling around it is important. So we have Mercury conjunct Pluto this week, and Venus conjunct Neptune. Those are each personal planets. Mercury is your personal energy around your mind and communication. Venus is your personal energy around self-worth, creativity, how you receive energies, relationships, and money. And when they are interacting with the outer planets, especially the two outer planets of Pluto and Neptune, There is something significant here working with you at a personal level, but these are faster moving energies. So you could feel it picking up one day, being very highlighted the next day, and then it's gone just like that. I mean, these energies are swift moving with both Mercury and Venus moving direct right now, but there's something we're meant to connect to. There's something we're meant to understand and allow it to positively work with us. So in your chart, you would identify where you have 28 degrees of Capricorn and then where you have 24 degrees of Pisces as these are the two points that are being highlighted over this next week. And then I'm actually going to jump ahead to February 16th, which is when the sun is conjunct Saturn at 27 degrees of Aquarius. And this feels significant. This feels very important because Saturn is moving into Pisces March 7th. So we have one month left of Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn first entered Aquarius for a few months in early 2020, then went back into Capricorn and re-entered Aquarius and had the great conjunction with Jupiter in Aquarius. And that occurred in the second half of December 2020. So we have had this Saturn in Aquarius for the typical two and a half to three year experience of each astrological sign. And as Saturn is completing its time here, the sun is coming through and shining a big light on your own evolutionary process, choices, and decisions that you have made while Saturn has been in Aquarius. And so this is where we are understanding what has reshaped us in the past three years. What in your physical world, what in your business, what in your life has changed with Saturn in Aquarius? Saturn being about the physical world, our responsibilities. Saturn is about how we show up and what we need to do in the world. It's very much about the practical components of our existence and what we have to take care of, what we're committed to. Saturn works often on a slower timeline. Saturn brings up the challenges, the delays, the pressure. Saturn shows us where we have to work through something and apply effort. And so with the Saturn transits through Aquarius, You could have had a good, healthy look at the Aquarius energies in your life and in your chart. Saturn does well in Aquarius because it is an astrological sign that it co-rules. And so this is where you could have fine-tuned something. You could have clarified. You could have become more specific in a goal, in a dream, in a vision 
how to get there, how to make it happen, what needs to be put into place, who is involved, who is a part of the team. Aquarius is about teamwork, the people we exchange energies with for a common goal. But with Saturn here, you could have some realizations around things you want to do your own way that you didn't want to perhaps continue on with certain groups, certain teammates, certain coworkers. There could have been a sense of, no, I'm going to do this on my own. Or maybe the universe was saying, you need to do this on your own. Because part of Saturn's developing strength is in what you're able to take on and handle with your own self-respect and personal integrity. So Saturn in Aquarius has been showing us also more of how we take our energies out into the world, how you interact and relate from an energetic place with others, what is good for your energy, what opens it up, what is healthy and supportive, perhaps also where the energies from others can feel too burdensome or heavy. Maybe that's also where you've made some choices or you've pivoted and you're like, yeah, this is not the way to go. I've made another decision, another choice that I have to follow. Saturn always requires us to make discerning choices, to be aware of what we're saying yes to. And that's why Saturn also supports us in saying no. Saying no to something if you don't really want it, if you can't really take it on, if it's not truly for your best and highest good, or it doesn't support your energy. So as the sun approaches its final conjunction with Aquarius, you could have some crystallizing decisions, crystallizing moments, a bigger understanding of where you've been and what you don't want to take forward. I also feel like the sun conjunct Saturn often brings in warmth. So Saturn in Aquarius can be very cold. It can be ice. It is connected with the cold, hard truth of something. It's connected to what we focus on from a very intellectual standpoint. It's a very mental energy. And it can also have a sense of being overly reliant on the mind, overly focused on thoughts, without considering feelings, without considering how the energy is received on the other end or how people feel about it, what's being offered out. So Saturn in Aquarius can be ice. And here comes the sun in Aquarius that is going to warm up anything that maybe has felt too cold or harsh or even a little bit uninviting. The sun comes through And it brings in that solar consciousness of warmth and light and the spotlight. And it wants you to see things in a new way. And when the sun shines its light through that Aquarian lens, it will highlight other angles, other things that you didn't see before, other things that you didn't realize because the light wasn't shining on it. So this could be something that comes to your awareness that maybe you've been working through over the past three years. Maybe this is something that is finally crystallizing for you around where you have invested your energy, your time, your work, where you're seeing something in a new light or in a new way. This energy is going to be strong over this next week and the exact conjunction happens February 16th at 27 degrees of Aquarius. So you would look in your chart at where you have 27 degrees of Aquarius and understand what is being clarified for you. This could also be a sense of achievement. Look at what you've done well. Look at what you have maneuvered through and handled with a sense of responsibility and dignity. Look at what you have created or been involved in that is paying off or is showing you more of the influence of your own energy. So these are just some general thoughts, but Saturn and the sun working together will highlight how far you've come, 
And that's because this is happening towards the end of Aquarius. This is at 27 degrees. And by the way, each of these three conjunctions that we've been discussing in today's show are all happening towards the end of each astrological sign. Mercury conjunct Pluto, 28 degrees of Capricorn. Sun conjunct Saturn at 27 degrees of Aquarius, Venus conjunct Neptune at 24 degrees of Pisces. So there is a completion energy here. There's a wrapping it up. There's a sense of look at how you've handled certain energies or experiences. Look at what you've moved through. Look at how you've grown. Look at how perhaps you've opened up your heart. Maybe there's been shifts or changes in how you receive Perhaps you're also sensing more of your ability to trust a process, trust a process that could be a bit scary or challenging to trust at times. There's something about this week that is pivotal in crystallizing energies, choices, and decisions for yourself that are also meant to be supportive of your growth. Now, on the other hand, if there are things you have pushed away, you haven't worked on it, you haven't given it the time of day, it has not been a priority, then that's what could come up for you as well. This is where things come back around and you have to take care of it. You have to revisit it. But the universe is saying, do so with trust in yourself, do so with clarity in your energy and what you want, and do so from a place of your own power so that you aren't holding back who you are. And this is an ongoing theme for us, especially as we move into the age of Aquarius, is that the age of Aquarius removes boundaries. It's like sitting in a room and all four walls collapse, the roof is removed, and the ground is taken away. And then you're just floating. That age of Aquarius energy is where we are in all new possibilities, all new openings. And something to be aware of that's really important is that this means there is even more diversity. There's more choices, more options, more openings than ever before. And people are being encouraged, in fact, even required to get into their gifts, get into the strength of their energy and who they are in this lifetime. And that can happen through very difficult means. I mean, if you've ever been laid off, if you've ever had to quit a job and move on to something else, if you've ever felt like things are in chaos and you don't know what to choose, these are difficult energies that we go through at times. But it's also where the universe is right there, supporting you across that bridge, supporting you into the next version of your reality, even though there is a mess or things that are scary or uncertain that come up along the way. But at this time on the planet, we have so many energies opening up, so many people feeling called to step into their soul gifts or really get clearer on how their energy is designed to be successful in this lifetime. And that alone is a beautiful opportunity that we have within these energies. At the same time, it opens up all these directions, all these interests and ideas and possibilities. And it's important to note that it might not be for you. This is where we're seeing people make choices or have certain interests that you might have no interest in. This is also where people are stepping into their own lane or their own expertise that might not be your expertise and might not be your interest, but we're breaking out of traditional roles or traditional paths. There are unlimited ways to be successful in these energies. There are so many different professions and careers and possibilities that we can trust and follow that are perfect for us, even if other people don't get it, or they don't understand how you can make a living doing that, or they don't understand the importance of that or the value of that. There's more ways to be satisfied and fulfilled in trusting who you are and that your energy is beautifully designed to express itself in this lifetime, even if it looks very, very different than what you expected of yourself or what others expected of you. So that could also be how you experience the sun conjunct Saturn in Aquarius is that it highlights more of your individual frequency. 
It highlights more of your unique spark and asks you to stand strong in that. Saturn wants strength. Saturn wants you to own who you are, own your talents, own your energy, and not be overly concerned with what others think, what they're perceiving, or even what you're assuming they're thinking or perceiving. So we have this huge opening in the energies. This means we're also going to have many differences, especially even just within the spiritual world, if you will, where there are people who are going to be interested in different things. And it's not up to any of us to say what's wrong. It's one thing if it's not your interest, if it doesn't resonate with you, that's all fine and good, but it isn't in our place to tell someone, oh, you shouldn't talk about that, or oh, that's not accurate, because you don't know the full extent of the energy or the full extent of their experience. So I feel like we're working with some very interesting energies here, because it's blowing things wide open, and that could be both jarring and exciting as well as everything in between. Because the energies are focused this week on those three conjunctions that I mentioned, also know that those conjunctions are happening in Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, the final three signs in the astrological wheel. They connect with the world energies, humanities path, and our spiritual growth. And there could be three areas of your life that are becoming clearer to you or where you're sensing the changes have happened. You could feel a clearing out or an ending. You could feel that karmic circles are done. Karmic cycles are done. It's funny, I said karmic circles because actually I was realizing the people involved in the karma are gone. There's no connection. You fully detached. You wish them well and you're at peace. That could be a hallelujah moment. There could be something there that you're sensing. And then it's like the universe brings in the new people, the new connections or the new areas of life that you're meant to trust and follow because of what's growing and developing there. You could have a sense that you're really ready for the next step, the next level, the new experiences. And in which case the universe can bring that in as well. It can show you what's possible. I feel like these energies are actually pushing us outside of comfort zones. They're pushing us outside of the energies and cycles that we've known. And there's new experiences to be had. There's new parts of yourself to meet, to get to know better, to lean into and step into. So there is a push here into the new, and it depends how you welcome that. It depends how you work with the new, because the new is unknown. The new is where we have the next level of growth and development. The new is where we step into new things that we didn't know about ourselves. So there's something here where the universe recognizes your story. The universe recognizes how far you've come. The universe has been traveling with you, sees you, gets it, knows the deeper energies, the bigger messages, knows everything you've been moving through. And I feel like the universe is very much supporting us in this next step, whatever that might be for you. And in fact, it could be three areas of life that are opening up or that you've had even closure around and now it's opening up. So this would be a beautiful time to look at what is calling to you, what is whispering to you, what is maybe even showing up in your face and saying, look here, right here, this is for you, or this has your name on it, because this can happen fast. And I feel too, like going back to what I said earlier, we can be in this place of, okay, I'm setting the intention, I'm trusting, I'm doing the work, I'm clearing things out. And then all of a sudden something shows up and you're jolted by it. You're like, wait, what? Really? This is here? Oh, I thought it was just in my head. Or I can't believe it's really real because I spent all this time dreaming about it or envisioning it or just wanting it to materialize and then it shows up. And this is a week where things can just show up. So prepare yourself, prepare your energy system 
Uh, certainly prepare your nervous system. If you have anxiety or fears that you're working through, always take care of your body consciousness and these various energies that we are and that we work with, but also check in with how well you receive because that is another energy signature of this Venus conjunct Neptune in Pisces. It's about divine timing and the universe could be bringing you a gift, could be bringing something in for you to receive. But if you push it away or you say, no, 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 it's not the right time or no, 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 I'm not worthy or no, 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 I'm too busy, then the universe says, okay, We respect your free will, we respect your choices, and we'll take this away or we'll close this out. So I feel like the energy is moving so fast that there's things that you want to be very intentional around and don't necessarily push something away simply because you don't know what it is or you don't know what it's going to be or it feels like it's challenging your comfort zone. I mean, this is again where we're working with trusting divine timing, trusting things as they come in because the universe has these energies showing up for us in ways that we might only really understand in hindsight. And one more thing I wanna mention as well about Saturn is that I just put a video for you up on YouTube about the Pisces new moon, which is coming up February 20th. Please check out that video because that new moon opens up an important energy that Saturn is going to be working with in Pisces throughout the rest of 2023. So whatever is initiated coming up around February 20th is also where you're going to be applying energy, effort, and understanding more about yourself throughout the rest of the year. So we're going to have ongoing important Saturn energies that show us what we're developing, what we are building, what we are trusting, And also I feel it connected to something in the heart because the Pisces energy is very loving and compassionate and kind. So it could be that there's new areas of your heart opening up, blossoming, blooming. And then throughout the rest of this year, there's things that are manifesting and showing up in a physical, tangible way to support that energy. So we're going to keep talking about this as we move through February, but I just want to give you a heads up at how the Saturn energies are coming through because again, it's about your world. It's about your physical reality, how you live your life, how you structure your life, what you're choosing, what you are putting energy towards, and how that is manifesting in your experiences. Before I close out the show, a few things to remind you of. The Awakening Astrology Retreat in Sedona is coming up in less than a month. Registration closes February 20th. So just a reminder for those of you who have the intention of joining us, please don't wait much longer. You want to secure your accommodations as well because it's a busy time in Sedona. So do check that out. I'll put the link below the podcast. Also a reminder of the upcoming Alaskan cruise that's happening the beginning of September, September 1st through the 8th. It's an Alaskan cruise that leaves from Seattle and stops at four different ports and also tours the glaciers. So please join me for that if you're interested in that kind of experience. You can find all the details at sailwithspirit.com, sailwithspirit.com, and be sure and put in my name when you sign up so that helps them organize who's coming and all that stuff that they have to do on their side. And for those of you who are astrologers, readers, intuitives, you do healing work with people one-on-one, I have a brand new business development program for you, specifically for you, to help you be an absolute expert and professional in this line of work. This program is actually going to be released this weekend on my website, and it's called Shine Your Guiding Light to help you be the best you can be with clients, 
with one-on-one sessions, with people that you interact with who come to you for guidance, expertise, support, understanding. This is a program that digs into the energetic foundation of your work. I ask you some philosophical questions about this work so that you have clarity in what you're doing and why. Then we also get into the nitty gritty of the work, how to handle certain difficult client interactions, how to guide people through certain transits. There's a video on helping you work with people who are going through transits with Chiron, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Like we dig in to what's essential to understand in these energies. And then we also talk about the financial component of this work, what you need to prepare for and be aware of, especially when things change in your work or things change in your life. This is a program I've been working on for a few months because I know how important it is right now for those with these gifts to get out there, to shine, to help people. This is what people are looking for more than ever. Astrology is blowing up. People love doing astrological work and understanding their energies through this language. And I want to offer you my own expertise that I've learned through the years. I share with you the number one mistake I made very early on. Never will do it again, but it was a tough lesson. And I also share with you the biggest hassle in my business. What has been Such a hassle. I don't do it anymore, but I offer that to you to help you understand what is best for your own business too. So in a way, this program is like a mentorship. It's a training. It's designed to help you get some clear answers. And it's also designed to help you move forward in your business to understand how to handle certain situations or certain things that maybe you haven't experienced yet. Maybe you haven't come up against it yet. Now you're going to have a heads up. Now you're going to understand ways of handling it or moving through it that are for your own best and highest good. So that program is coming out and it's designed to help you be more successful based on your unique energy. So check out the landing page with more information about the program, and I really hope it supports you. I hope it resonates, and I also hope it helps you feel more confident in your gifts and how you're guiding people. You can find out more about my other programs and offerings at mollymccord.online, and I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday with another podcast episode for you. As always, thank you so much for joining me here and thank you for connecting on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I'll see you back here very soon. Wishing you a beautiful week ahead. Take good care.